and welcome to Connected, a bilingual space that is open for information, good vibes, and life stories. On these 30 minutes, I welcome people from all over the world. I hear their stories, I learn from their achievements, and get inspired from their determination to make things happen. I hope you do too. I am one day away from starting my holiday break, which means no work for some time. Yay! I hope you are too, getting ready to relax and to regroup. Sometimes we get caught up on work, the schedules, obligations, and whatnot. We even stress out to go on vacation. But the important thing is to find that moment to reflect, to appreciate, to be thankful, regardless of the situation you are in. Take note. I want to remind you that you don't only see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but also through Facebook, Twitter, and later when the show is over on our YouTube channel. a review from the past six months for today. I love doing reviews because I really enjoy remembering beautiful moments we had here on the show. I am a firm believer that life is made out of moments, out of experiences. Some are happy, some not so much, but there is always something to keep from them. And that's exactly what I want to rescue from the past six months we have been on air. Let's start in New York City. I had the pleasure to converse with Margarita Likova. She told us about her passion for weaving. There's also a rhythm once you start using the shadow from right to left and you use your um, feet to change the pedal so you can alter the warp. Um, it's really the slow pace. It is it, it is a little time consuming, as you said. Like I say one evening, but I do mean until 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. since I'm so committed. <laughs> I just don't even feel the, how the time passes. Uh, so yeah, I would say that it just allows you to be in a quiet environment. From there, let's move on to woven DNA. How did it start? I always loved the uh, word weaving. It, it had a me some meaning for me every time I hear about weavers or weaving. I, I just could relate, like something triggered in me. So um, I was thinking of a name around weaving. Um, however, woven, it's a little shorter. And then woven DNA, the combination, it, it's just... Um, to me, the meaning is that we carry this in ourselves, and once we, uh, once I got in touch with weaving, I could totally um, connect to those memories of my grandmother or my ancestors who have done this. I just totally could relate to this and could describe it as something that it, it's very mine. It's very, it belongs to me. Right. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of make the significance that we carry within ourselves and just the process of weaving and creating something out of almost nothing it's just amazing to me it's very beautiful <laughs> sabine choker an amazing clown that not only spreads joy and love at every refugee camp she visits in Lebanon, but also she shares valued information in order to make it happen, there is an ambient that right, you develop, you create a, an, an ambient. So tell me about the street performances. Um, do they have any relation with healing on people or of any kind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, for clowning, I mean, the, the fact I do to be on the street, is, is very, very important for us because we, because I thought instead of just being in a theater and having people come 
to to watch me or my group performing i want to be able to go to them to go beyond the main cities where it happens i want to go to uh, front lines to borders to really far places where we can reach so many people and we can there on the street which is which is where most people are right we spend a lot of time on the streets either driving or going from one place to another or just walking around wandering around so this is a very important place so uh the, deciding to do the performances on, on the street uh is very is 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 very important because one we can reach more people but also it can give people a very nice surprise like oh walking and then i see something is happening and then i go i'm like what is this well this is something funny this is something fun this is make this is making me laugh and at the same time we always try to uh, approach and, and and trigger discussions about deep issues that uh, you know about social justice about the environment so so it's it's not only having fun but having fun and having interesting discussions uh so so this for me is very important That's one aspect the other aspect is the therapeutic aspect and i think laughter by itself is very therapeutic we all need to lo- to laugh uh, we anything we want to say be heard and discuss better if it's said in a in a lighter way than if it's if, if we go oh blah 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 i don't want this and i want that and blah, 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 then people won't won't take in these things let's go to a really fast cut we'll be right back stay connected welcome back let's remember monica gonzalez an international teacher native from bolivia that shared her experience teaching in india and china For the people that are young and also would like to have this experience and also has the call to know cultures and to know languages. I would say first, um, stop worrying about things, but uh, create experiences. And so what that means is like, I always thought that traveling was expensive and that I couldn't afford it. The reality is when you put your hand to it and you put a priority, it's possible. And the other thing I, for me, has expanded is, you know, learn, learning a language and being able to, to dream, you know, and take the first step. I always like, traveling has been always my, my, my dream, but I also didn't know how to begin. I didn't know how, where to begin. And so, The first thing I, I could advise, you know, for young people is like, just just take it one step at a time, one day at a time, working towards the goals, rather than saying, oh, that's a, too big of a goal and I'm never gonna get there. Or like, a, just dream, 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 but not do anything about it. So I think every day is an opportunity to just uh, do a little something that will get you closer to, to your dream, to your goal, to whatever that is, um, you know, for me has been, has been exploring the world. And, and I never would have expected, or I never would have anticipated that I was going to be an international teacher, um, living in the countries and really getting deeper into the, the culture. But I feel like uh, all along the choices that I have made have helped me to kind of find that path. And so I just, you know, if I have anything to say is like never underestimate the beauty of your dreams. Uh, take one step at a time and just kind of be, be proactive. Yeah. Renato Vaz Pinto, a Brazilian dancer and jiu-jitsu fighter that spreads the Brazilian culture throughout the U.S. But also, how is the the image of the women as a fighter in jiu-jitsu? What happens there? Do you have many students? Do you go also to competitions with your students? 
Yes, I actually just started a all women's class about three months ago. Um, I've been a Jiu Jitsu practitioner since 2008. And I've been to many competitions. Um, there's the International Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Federation um, here. And um, they have, a, I would say, over 20 or 30 uh, competitions per year. And um, they have the Pan Americans, the Worlds. The, the last one they had was the Worlds in August. And we took a group of 15 people to Las Vegas uh, wow. to compete. And some of those were women. Um, I have to say that in the last couple of years, Jiu Jitsu has grown so much and the women are um, getting to know Jiu Jitsu more. And I am so happy that women are willing to try the classes because I find it very important to ladies to know how to defend themselves. Right. Um, call me crazy, but I am a runner, you know, I do half marathons and I like to go jog on the streets, on the trails, and you never know who's behind you or who's watching you. So right. knowing how to, you know, hold somebody down on the floor, maybe, you know, immobilize the person, chokes, arm bars, wrist locks, ankle locks, you know, just stuff to give you enough time to run away is very important. So I motivate and I try to tell every woman that I know that it's important for them to know Jiu Jitsu. Emmanuel Forcade, our first guest from France. He shared with us his amazing talent, rock balancing. What is the personal experience with rock balancing? We already talked about uh, the time that you put there, right? That you spend lots of time and it can be meditative in a way. And also that now what you just said, that it is um, that you, you work with the non-attachment. So tell us, how do you, how does that um, shows up in your life? How as an artist and practicing this art, yeah. how did that help you change or in which ways uh, affects you? Yes, I understand. Yes, for, for me, uh, the balancing, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it, it had really changed my life because he, 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 uh, he, he, you must have a lot of perseverance and passion and patience and and always you think oh no it's not possible but I will try it and try and try and yeah sometimes the, it's magical just just like that and wow say okay it's, yeah it's really that just yeah, it, yeah, yeah. In fact, he had not, not. It's difficult to make word on that because it's a lot of feeling, a lot of sensation with your finger and your heart, and yeah, finally, uh, yeah. Sandra Gallardo, another Bolivian talent, told us about her path as a makeup artist in Texas. So, are you the? Do you always uh, practice on yourself? My personal experience is doing the makeup on myself. It's a way to go. For, for example, I have a client that needs a makeup school for Halloween. The first thing I do is, is practice on myself. I do the makeup on me. That's the way I make sure the makeup is the best it can be. We met Daniela Villegas, a devoted biochemist that has left Bolivia to work in the world-renowned John Hopkins Hospital. So, all right, you started in Bolivia, you went to the US, and now you're working at the John Hopkins Hospital, which is very well known in the world. So tell me, how is this experience then? Well, it's, um, working in John Hopkins has been it's just wonderful, you know, I mean, um, not only because, as you well said, it's, it's one of the best places in the world it's, in, in terms of, you know, um, science, in terms of research, in terms of technology, knowledge, it's amazing. I've learned a lot and, and I continue learning and, you know, it's, it's just great. 
Um, another part that I love about um, Hopkins is their, their, you know, their diversity culture that they have. I mean, you walk in the um, hospital, and it's, it is as if you were working, you were walking in a, at the airport. You see <laughs> people from all kinds of, you know, sizes, shapes, forms, colors, nationalities. It's beautiful. It's it's beautiful. Um, because you know, today in our society, we're we're being judged of the color of our skin, um, our height, our um, accent, you yeah. know, the place where we're coming from, the culture, everything. And finding a place where you are actually welcome, uh, with our regard of you know all these things that are so superficial, but they see you as for who you are, it's, it's actually refreshing, it's, it's beautiful, it's a really nice thing and they don't do it all only with uh, patients because obviously they have patients from all over the world right. but um, they do it also with their with the people that work there like I had colleagues um, from you name it, it's <laughs> all you know everywhere in the, in the world and it's great, it's, it's, uh, it's very diverse um, now, professionally, it's been amazing. Uh, I mean, the, the techno technology that they have there. I've actually worked with with um, some of the uh, doctors that actually wrote some of the books that I would use in school to That's study. So you know, I mean, that is amazing. Face to face, and it's uh, it's great. It's great, and they and they're all you know very willing to to share their knowledge, which is great. Um, I just keep learning. It's it's been amazing. It's, it's really it's a it's a great place to work. We have five more guests to remember, so don't go anywhere. We're going to a fast cut. Continuing with the six month review, we remember Michael Doe from Australia. He told us all about the peacock spiders. Despite the time difference, everything went well with this interview. How do you feel this work and what do you do impacts the world in any level or in any way? Um, throwing pictures out on social media, um, the biggest response I've had back is people who really didn't like spiders now don't find them nearly as repulsive. So um, people have got a little bit more tolerance than probably not going to start to spray everything. They're going to think about things before they bring out the poison and, and spray. And also when we've done shows and talked to children, hopefully we've changed a few kids' minds and they're going to go into the bush with a whole different idea of what there is to see. It's not just kangaroos bouncing through. There's a whole lot of interesting things that are all happening in the undergrowth and if you take your time and look around, there's just so much to see. And if we, yeah, if we've changed a few minds about their environment, I think we've done a great job. Alexis Noriega showed us how it's done when it comes to costumes, cosplay and robotics. How do you feel or how do you see that your work or your art impacts the world in any way? What, what would you say? How could, do you think you can? You are actually making a difference in in today's world. Well, I think I think my 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 favorite impact. I don't know if it's the biggest one. Um, I think the biggest one probably is everybody just gets excited and entertained by it. But um, one of the things that really makes me happy is seeing so many little girls and younger women get involved in engineering and science because they see that it's not just about cars and, and equipment and whatever. Like you can use science and engineering and robotics to create something really beautiful and cool and, and fun and artistic outside of like the humdrum normal engineering principles that you hear about in school that are totally boring, except for they're also awesome. But um, <laughs> so, so sometimes I feel like girls feel excluded because they're like, oh, if you, you know, going 
going into engineering means you have to be like into cars and stuff. It's like, no, you can, you can learn about robotics and you can make art. And uh, that's, that's one of the greatest impacts that I like, I like to see. So I, any t- chance I get, I go to women's hackathons and, and uh, I give speeches and talks at, at any kind of maker fest or hacker fest where I can hopefully um, inspire young women and young girls to, to make their own something, whatever that is. We had the honor to speak with Teatro de Títeres Guachipilín, the one and only interview conducted in Spanish this year. It was a great pleasure to have Soa Mesa and Gonzalo Cuellar sharing their life story from Managua, Nicaragua. ¿Qué, qué clase de historias estos títeres cuentan? ¿Qué, ¿Qué es lo que ellos proyectan a los niños? Mira, nosotros desde que empezamos, nos propusimos como descubrir nuevos héroes y nuevos códigos del teatro para niños. Y nos, en, en, nos bueno, nos, in, eh, nos sumergimos en la búsqueda de una identidad, de una oralidad propiamente nicaragüense. Nicaragua tiene una tradición oral muy, muy larga de cuentos con mucha fantasía, eh, son géneros de, de cuentos vinculados con la tierra, con los animales, eh, interesantísimo. Entonces empezamos a trabajar eh, eh, acercando al niño a su tradición, acercando al niño a, a, su, a, su propio, a sus propios cuentos. Que vivimos en momentos muy especiales en mi país, el hecho de que mmm, eh, terminara una etapa y entráramos a otra en los años 80 nos permitió abrir muchos espacios y uno de esos es una revolución cultural el hecho de darnos cuenta de que éramos un pueblo que estaba en la búsqueda de su propio yo de las cosas donde el pueblo pudiera encontrarse a sí mismo a través de todo lo que es valioso su forma de hablar sus comidas eh, sus historias mismas entonces en ese el teatro no estaba exento de ello, yo creo que estaba, al contrario, estaba mucho más comprometido. Y entonces, cuando hablamos del rescate de la oralidad, era porque en las etapas anterior se nos había negado eso. O sea, vos no podías hablar de forma que hablabas, que tenemos una forma muy particular de hacerlo, porque eras hincho, porque eras un indio, y todo eso en términos peyorativos y despectivos. Entonces, estamos en esta etapa en donde es hay que darle su lugar, darle su espacio y ver los personajes de nuestras historias como personajes para vestidos con él, con otro, aventuras que se vivían en algún lugar, en, qué sé yo, las, los cuentos de aparecidos, las historias de la familia, que eran eh, incluso cuentos ancestrales, las historias de cómo nos... Claro. Y eso fue como el punto de partida para empezar a crear las primeras historias que nos contactaran con el nicaragüense niño. We converse with David Holton. He has visited more than a hundred countries. He told us all about it from Madison, Wisconsin in the U.S. And tell us, how have all of these experiences influenced you as a human being? And also, what advice would you give to the audience, to the new generation to come? Mm-hmm. Well, um, I mean, I think travel has been crucial in the person I am today. So, um, you know, when I'm looking at the news and I see the war in Syria or Yemen, I think about all the beautiful people whose homes I visited in Syria and Yemen. Oh, it humanizes the world. Um, it, you know, it, it makes it real when you're uh, looking at uh, Western propaganda about North Korea. Um, I think back about all the wonderful people I met in North Korea. And again, it humanized them. It, it didn't, uh, uh, it, it made me realize that, you know, in the world, we all have so much in common. And I guess that's been one of the most important things about, about travel for me is um, I have the ability to, you know, to, to I guess, empathize with, with all people. It's made me, I think, very, very compassionate. 
it's made me understand so much more about how the world works and functions and uh, and uh, what people are like all over the place. It's, it's really important. Um, you don't have to go that far to travel, but I highly encourage everyone uh, to travel far and wide. And the last but not least, Gabriela Gant, a Brazilian DJ that shared her experience as a female DJ, her love for music, and the need to make people dance and dance. So Gabriela, tell us, on each presentation, what is it that you want to provide the audience? Any message that you want to get out there? I take music as a certain school subject. Let's say that a way to educate people, I respect all musical genres. The trans movement is an environment, environment totally different from the others. It is an environment where people are free, they indulge in dancing, uh, where people respect each other. Nowadays, the social media ended up taking, taking care of everything and exposing this reality a lot, what attracts different people with totally different talent. Uh, so, I see the need to show child music the importance of knowledge. The people who are the receiving the music, they are getting a different, a different experience, an experience that had talked so much at the time. Something peculiar, waiting it, each one uh, unique teaching. So my intention is to show the context that music is behind, the story of the production. I chose my songs by the elaborate melody, coherence and harmonic we have reached the end of the show and I am so thankful for you that take the time to connect with me for each and every single one of my guests that made the time on their schedules to chat with me. Also, thankful to all the amazing professionals that are behind the cameras that make this show a reality. A big thank you to you all. I will see you again in seven days with the annual review of the show. Do not miss it out. For the ones that celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas and goodbye until next time with me.